Father God, we allow the word to do what it was intended to do. To overcome fear, doubt, and unbelief, and to propel the instruments of change. We decree revelation, wisdom, understanding, and retention right now in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You can have your seats. Devin, can you turn me down a little bit? Turn me down just a little bit. Ah, oh, man. 2016. 2015 is done away with. Yes. And in Chicago, 484 people mm -hmm. did not make it to see this day. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that? That God will cover you. You all, God will cover you. Faith on fire, God will yes. cover us. Men and women, yes. God yes. will cover you. There is no fear inside of the will of God. You all, I used to, I used to be very fearful of just being a black man. You know, I don't go in certain areas. Everybody know where, if I'm out, I don't go past where? 95th. I don't go past 95th. Certain areas I won't go into because there was a, a certain fear because I, I never wanted to get mistaken for somebody else, amen? But you all, there is no fear inside of the word of God because the Bible says mm -hmm. that perfect love Cast out all fear. Y'all, yes, yes. as we step into 2016, there are going to be some challenges ahead. And I'm here to tell you to fear not. Mm -hmm. Because perfect love will cast out all yes. fear. You will be able to complete your assignment. Amen? Amen? Turn with me to Genesis, the fourth chapter. We're going to begin at verses 1 through 6. Now, this is a good time to have your Bible. Because the media ministry, the devil is trying to get in there. But he will not. Amen? Amen. Genesis, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 6. And I'm reading out the New King James Version. And you all, please pay attention to me for, two, for 2016. Because I believe this is a word specifically delivered for you, Durell. Specifically delivered for you, man of God. Specifically delivered for everybody in this house. Black thought he was special. I said, oh, man, only for me today. For you, Shani, for you, Jamal. So, amen? So, let's go. Genesis, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bore who? Cain. Cain. And, he, and she said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother, Abel. Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought up the firstborn of his flock and then their fat. And the Lord did what? respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And the Bible says his what? His countenance fell. Y'all, Cain did one of these. His countenance fell. In other words, he was in his feelings. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all people know some, know some people been in their feelings? Mm -hmm. You know, you try to tell them something, and you see it all over their face. Mm -hmm. you, try to, you try to speak truth, you try to be real to them, and you see, listen, the face will never lie. You tell somebody something, and their whole countenance drop, y'all. They're in their feelings, y'all. Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Verse 6, So the Lord said to Cain, 
Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, sin lies where? At the door. Y'all, this is a hard word today. Let me read that again. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you shall do what? Rule over it. Mm. People got to take out your pants today. I want to talk to you from the subject today of the new opportunity. Everybody say new opportunity. New opportunity. How many y'all in 2016 are trusting God for some new opportunities? Amen. So come on, I, I need to hear some prayer. If you trusting God for a new opportunity in 2016, let me, yeah. let me hear you sound like you trusting yeah. God for a new yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Okay, some of y'all cheated. Y'all don't know it, y'all. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Listen, y'all, I'm trusting God yeah. today yeah. for a new opportunity. One more time. Everybody say new opportunity. New opportunity. Saints of God, I believe that what God is saying today is that if you maximize this new opportunity that he's going to give you, then you will walk into a dimension in him that you have never experienced before. Come on. Only if you maximize this what? New opportunity. Come on. Now this word opportunity is very key to the direction that you're headed in in your walk with Christ. So this is what opportunity means. Opportunity is a situation or condition favorable. Everybody say favorable. favorable. For the attainment of a goal. So this is what opportunity is. Now listen, we're talking about 2016, right? We're talking about the new opportunity. This is how your opportunity is going to look in 2016. It's going to be a situation. It's going to be some condition. That are in your favor Amen. for the attainment of your goal. It's an opportunity. Now watch this, y'all. Every opportunity is not an easy opportunity. Let me tell you this. You know the CEOs and the people that get paid the biggest bucks. Mm -hmm. You know what they are? They're nothing but problem solvers. If you want to be a CEO of a company, you have to deal with systems and logistics, and you have to be problem solvers. So watch this. If God is going to give you a new opportunity this year, it might come in the form of you solving some problems and some issues in 2016. And God is going to use those things to work in your favor so that you can achieve a goal. Watch this. There's a story of a young lad, right? And a man was stuck on the side of the road. And he had been stuck for so long. Cars had been passing him by. His car was overheated. Nobody stopped. Now the young lad had a particular set of skills. He was a mechanic. Y'all be no smile when I talk about mechanics. But y'all, the young lad was a mechanic. Now watch this. There was a man who needed help. And rather than pass over the man, watch this. He asked him, what's the problem? The man says, my car is overheated, and I've been stuck here for hours. Everybody has passed me by. He said, well, well you know, I have a particular set of skills. Let me take a look at it. Y'all, he began to solve the problem of the man's issue with his car. Not knowing that one of the men, that the man was one of the wealthiest men in the 50 states of America. You know, out of the goodness of his heart, he blessed the young man beyond measure. Because he was able to come into his situation and solve the problem. I'm telling you, in 2016, if you would get into the problem-solving mentality, that is your life, that is your finances, that is your relationships, that is ministry. If you will begin to get the mindset to say, let me figure out and solve the issues that are plaguing me, 
you can reach your goals this year. Mm. <coughs> the worst thing you can do is to have something to be going wrong and you not know why it's going wrong. Because if you don't know why it's going wrong, guess what you can't do? You can't fix it. Yeah. If you don't know why you don't got no money, you can't fix it. If you don't know why your spouse is talking to you crazy, you can't fix it. And it's confusion all across the board because nobody knows why. I'm here to tell you in 2016, God is going to give you a new opportunity to solve some problems in your life. And how you respond to those opportunities is going to determine if you maximize what God wants to do with you in 2016. Amen? Amen. Opportunity. This is what the Lord gave to Cain. Y'all, he gave Cain a new opportunity. In fact, look at verse 6. The Lord says to Cain in verse 6, Why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, y'all please follow me today. If you do well, will you not be accepted? In other words, God made it perfectly clear that the reason his offering wasn't accepted was because he didn't do well. Y'all follow me again. Let's, let's look at this. Go back to verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought up the firstborn of the flock of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? Mm -hmm. And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and his desire is for you, but you shall rule over it. So again, God made it perfectly clear to him that his offering wasn't accepted because he didn't do well. Y'all, as I'm reading this, I, I, you know, I, I really wanted to get into the psyche and, and, and the mental state of Cain and Abel. So watch this. Now, they both gave something. Follow me. They both gave an offering. They both gave something. But somebody's something was not good enough. Mm. Y'all, you got two brothers. You got two people in ministry. You got two saints. You got two husbands. You got two wives. They both gave unto the Lord, right? It wasn't because he did not give. But God says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? Mm -hmm. Now, throughout the body of Christ, we have churches full of spiritual canes and abels. <laughs> Everybody giving something. But not everybody is giving God their best. And God is saying, I am no longer respecting it. Yes. Yes. Two brothers. I give you a mind. I give you. God says, I respect that, but I don't respect yours. And God gives him what? Watch this, you all. A new opportunity. God says, why are you getting mad? Why is your countenance falling? If you do well, you'll be accepted. But if not, sin, guess what, you all, lies at the door. Y'all, we have the body of Christ filled with spiritual kings and angels. Everybody's given something, but everybody's something is not good enough. Mm. And y'all, you got to, we got to really look at ourselves this year, y'all. This was a hard word even for myself. Because you want to wonder why some people operate on different levels of ministry. It's not that they ain't giving to God. It's not that they ain't doing nothing. God said that something is not good enough anymore. Now what did the word say? Did they both give? Yes. But it was something in what Cain gave. In the way that he gave it. And maybe the spirit that he gave it in. I, I can't even pinpoint what it was. But the goodness about God is, God said, whatever it is, get it right. Y'all, that's the new opportunity. I'm here to challenge you today. Listen, whatever it is, let's get it right. God said, listen, 2016, you, and, and we had this Cain and Abel mentality. 
Some people doing this in ministry.